So as a libertarian, how should we handle A, the incident at the Red Hen, and B, Congressman Waters' comments? Joining me now from Reason.com, where he serves as managing editor, Peter Suderman. This is Suderman Computerman. Welcome back to the show, Peter. Thanks very much. Uh, glad to be here. I know. Uh, so let's talk first about the Red Hen. Was it inappropriate for them, the, the restaurant owner, to ask Sarah Sanders to leave because she finds the administration she works for immoral? I totally agree with what you said in your monologue. As a legal principle, of course she has the right as a business owner to serve with some very limited exceptions anyone or no one for any reason or no reason. And that is a core constitutional principle, freedom of association. You have the right to do business with the people you want to do business with or to not do business with people you don't want to do business with. And it's really important to protect that right. On the other hand, I also think that there is a sort of matter of civility and there's also a matter, frankly, of political strategy here. Mm. And I don't think that uh, the trend here that is suggested by doing this and by what Maxine Waters has, has said, you know, create, a, create basically a crowd, create a mob, and let's not let these people eat anywhere. And that seems to me to be very dangerous, even if you think that people in, say, the Trump administration's cabinet uh, really deserve not to be allowed to eat out, even if you think that. Think about how far that this that this will eventually go and how people will take this. It's not like people are going to draw fine lines. That will expand very rapidly. And eventually we're going to end up with a, a situation in which they're Democratic and Republican and maybe even some libertarian restaurants. And that's not really the world that you or I or anyone, I think, wants to live in. No. I mean, do we really want to live in a world that is trifurcated? Like that? I, I certainly don't. I mean, do you want to? I mean, maybe you do, but do you want to just drink with libertarians? There is a red there hen here in Washington, D.C. that is a wonderful restaurant, has absolutely nothing to do with this fracas, with this at all. And yet it has been getting harassed on yes. social media. Now, they've so been handling it very well. So you're saying I should stop well. calling them asking if they have Prince Albert in a can? <laughs> <laughs> yes, probably. I don't, you know, uh, maybe I should stop calling them, too. Uh, it's in my neighborhood. It's a great place. Yeah. And this is kind of, this is the trend that we see coming out of this. Again, it is a bedrock apps. legal We're gonna principle. We're going to need apps like, oh, can I, can I drink a Starbucks and go to Chick-fil-A in the same day? <laughs> I'm so confused. In America, you can go to Starbucks, you can have a cocktail, you can go to whatever restaurant you want, That's so right, long yeah. as that business owner will agree to serve you. And like I said, this is a bedrock principle, but also it's a, it, but just like principle, you know, sort of legal issues aside, there's also the matter of political strategy. And I think that if you are somebody who does not like Donald Trump and does not want to see Donald Trump Trump in office yeah. after 2020, you, you're going to say this is a bad idea. And that is why you are seeing Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, David Axelrod, really senior people in the Democratic Party whose yes. job basically is to elect Democrats. They're saying, I don't really think that this Maxine Waters business, I don't really think that we want to go that far. In fact, what we want to do is say we want civility. We want people to be able to eat where they want to, where they want yeah, to eat. And, this and is not something that we want to pursue. And if people are on the fence, you want them voting for your party. Right. And if, if you make people feel like they are going to be surrounded and shouted down or much worse because of a bumper sticker they might have, they are much less likely to vote for you or anyone in your party. And, you know, for all the flaws that Nancy Pelosi has, I'm glad that she spoke out today against Maxine Waters because, you know, she was the one who stood up there with Paul Ryan when Steve Scalise was fighting for his life, saying that in the House we are all one family. You see how quickly uh, this turns violent and deadly, unfortunately. Last yeah, the word. escalation is a real risk here. And the, for Democrats, the name of the game is flipping counties that went for Trump, excuse me, that went for uh, Obama and then went for Trump. Yeah. They want to flip them back to Democratic counties. Do you think, does anyone really think that the way to flip those, uh, th those counties that went one way and then went the other way is to uh, attack, uh, uh, is to harass, is to for mobs no. that it's are that go after the Trump living crap members? out of people who were signed up for another party. No, it's the dumbest thing you can do. And hopefully people with any political sense at all whatsoever will come to their senses and realize that because it is exhausting. But I have to say, after watching the president's rally tonight, it's it, those rallies are addictive. They, they are like Gotti, a laugh a minute.
People do like them. Although, you know, now that you bring up President Trump's rallies, I do got to say that President Trump has kind of participated in some of this behavior That's himself true. back on yes. the campaign. And, and we he discussed said that he earlier in the show. encouraged people, you know, to yep. uh, and encourage that, people that to be violent okay. to protesters. That is and I don't not think okay. That's it's okay. not okay on either side. I agree with you completely. And that's why we're a bunch of damn hippies for freedom, Peter Suderman. I'm with you, Kennedy. Always. Oh, love it. Thank you, ma'am. Good to see you. Thank you.